Glory to Jesus Christ, dear brothers and sisters. It is good to be together again to pray and to reflect upon the mysteries that give us life. Let's begin with the prayer of the Troparion of the first days of Holy Week. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold, the bridegroom comes at midnight, and blessed is the servant whom he finds watching. And again, unworthy is the servant whom he shall find heedless. Beware, therefore, O my soul, do not be weighed down with sleep, lest you be given up to death, and lest you be shut out of the kingdom. But rouse yourself, crying, Holy, holy, holy are you, O our God. Through the Theotokos, have mercy on us. Having said this prayer, we are roused, roused not to sleep. And yet, our salvation is not a question of rousing ourselves. We began this Holy Week mission reflecting on death. On death that is surrounding us at the time of the coronavirus that is inducing so much anxiety. Here in our Archeparchy, we were struck by the passing of our Archbishop and Metropolitan Emeritus, Stefan Sulik. But in fact, death is natural and it's around us. It's natural in our human life, our life of the f flesh. But it is not natural to God's plan. We were created to live. Adam and Eve were to live forever, along with their progeny. It is the sin of turning away from God that leads to death. If you turn away from the source of life, you condemn yourself using your freedom, using that same freedom that was given to us by God so that we could love, so we could respond, be in relationship with the source of life. He didn't create an automaton, a mechanism, a robot, but he gave us a soul and he gave us free will. And we, with our free will, repeat the sin of Adam and Eve. The nature of that sin is our natural, already in this flesh, in this life, in this world, our natural inclination to try to be self-sufficient. You know, a small child says, let me do it alone. No, no, I want to do it alone. We want to do it alone. Overcoming that sinful, deadly inclination of turning away from God, of pulling things into our small little possessive ego. Overcoming that is not something we can do easily. In fact, we can't do it by ourselves. 
And what we see in a radical way in Holy Week, in the passion of our Lord that leads to his entombment, here you see a copy of the Shroud of Turin, In Holy Week, that ends with the Lord's resurrection, we see how Jesus follows the will of the Father. It is the Father that wills his Son to come into our life, to come into this world, to live in this flesh, so that by entering our life and our death, taking on our sin with his divinity, he can destroy his power. He can take us out of this destiny of death. And we see Jesus pulling Adam and Eve out of Hades, out of the black pit having broken the gates of Hades, of hell. We can't do it ourselves. We need God's grace. I want to invite you, encouraging both you and myself, this Holy Week, to enter deeply into the manner of our Lord because he has entered our life. When you read the scriptures, and I hope you're finding time, because if you can't find it in this unique opportunity of quarantine, I don't know when, when one will. When you read the Gospels, when you listen to the Word of God in the liturgies that we will be transmitting online. Don't be a bystander. Don't be just part of the audience, kind of passively listening, part of the crowd. But try to be Jesus himself. This isn't an exercise of a, for, for a different point of view or perspective. This is really an act of awareness regarding our baptism. When we were baptized, when children are baptized in this church, when adults are baptized, we put on Christ. In fact, at big feasts we sing, you who are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Paul says, it's no longer I that live, it's Christ that lives in me. And this is the way that we can overcome our weaknesses and our sin. You know, I think all of us have something in our life that we begrudge. Something that hurt us. Somebody that acted against us. When we look and read about the Annases and the Caiaphases, the father-in-law of the high priest and the high priest himself, when we look and listen to Pilate during the Passion or King Herod. Let us look and listen to them as Jesus did. Let us do it from Jesus' person because you are Jesus. You are Christ. You are Christ not by the virtue of your virtues, not by the efforts of Lent, 
not by some strenuous self-restraint of your passions or an exercise of your spiritual muscles. But you are Christ by virtue of God's will. You are Christ, you're Jesus, because you're baptized into Christ. And it is when we realize our Christian identity, when we live from that identity, that we can act in a divine way. We can forgive. We can heal. We can be a source of profound inspiration for others. You see, Jesus took on the passion, our sin and our death, freely. He knew exactly what was happening. He knew what would happen. He was terrorized by it. He sweated drops of blood in Gethsemane. There should be no doubt about it. This was a real human experience. Jesus had a real human body, human emotions, real humanity. He was like you and me. And yet, he did not run away from what was the will of the Father. He said, take away this cup from me but not my will, let your will be done. And he did that throughout his earthly life. He followed the will of the Father. Sometimes even those who were close were surprised by that. Do you remember as a boy when he stayed behind in Jerusalem and Mary and Joseph had walked a day's journey back home before they realized that Little Jesus was not with the other children. And they asked him, what were you doing? And he said, I was with the work of my father. His whole human life, the son of God, the God man, was the son of his father. This was made manifest in the Theophany, in the River Jordan. When Jesus accepted the baptism from John, and as the water flowed down his head and body, the words of the Father said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. When we are baptized, we receive that same blessing of sonship. You are the daughter of the Father, in whom he is well pleased. You are the Son. And that sonship allows us, invites us, enables us in the Holy Spirit to fulfill the will of the Father. As sons and daughters, as members of the Father's family, not as slaves. We are not servants who must obey because of the law, because of the whim of a commander. We are sons and daughters of our Father. It's hard for us to believe that, that sonship, that beloved quality. But it's only when we accept the fatherhood of Abba, Daddy. When that relationship is direct, when we can feel God's love and respond by doing His will, when we realize that 
we are Jesus. That we can do divine things like forgive others for their trespasses against us. This is an encouragement, a condition in Jesus' prayer, our Father. This is the real depth to which we are called in Holy Week. To experience the judgment of Jesus as he did, forgiving those who judge us. To walk the way of the cross as did Jesus, with him, in him, and through him in the power of the Holy Spirit, which, which enables us to keep going forward. Ultimately, to hang on the cross with Jesus, in Jesus, and through Jesus, from there forgiving those who crucify us. Listening and reading the scriptures, the gospels, the passion narrative. Don't tense up. Don't make resolutions to change the world or even change yourself. But identify with the Lord who is identified with us, with our human frailty, who has taken on our sin who has entered us, who has baptized us into the sonship of the Father, which he shares with us. And it is with Christ, in Christ, through Christ, that we will experience the resurrection. It's not a story out there. It's not a historical movie. It is your story and my story and the story of every person that opens their souls, their hearts to Christ, who so much wants us to live who wants us to live at a time of death, who wants us to live despite the deadly destiny of sin, who gives us that life, life is a gift, not as a wage that we've earned or a prize that we've struggled for. Relax. Drop your pretensions. Let go of our visions, our projects, and our plans. Christianity is not a moral system. Our faith is not a self-help book. The Bible is a story of God entering our life. Pray to Christ looking in his eyes. Pray and ask him to help you be his sister and brother. Pray to Christ and ask him to help you see the love of the Abba of the Daddy, of the Father. Pray to Christ that in him you can receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts that allow us to do things that no human being can do through self-reliance.
There are no preconditions for this. No entrance exam. No particular talent. No great knowledge or skill. But a relationship of an open heart to which Jesus speaks, to which the Lord comes. May this openness be yours. And ask for the intercession of the Mother of God, who is a young girl, accepted the Holy Spirit, from whom the Son of God was conceived in her womb. Mary, throughout her motherhood of Jesus, grew in her understanding of who the Son of God was. She came to know deeply the Son's relationship to the Father, his obedience in freedom. That's what enabled her to stand at the cross, crying and witnessing in a human way the devastating scene of torture and the death of her son Jesus. She stood, she was able to stand because of her faith in the relationship of the Son to the Father. Knowing that the Son's obedience is a quality of the relationship of love. And that the same Holy Spirit that conceived Jesus in her womb will the, be the Spirit of power by whom the Father will resurrect the Son. It is the Father calling the Son with the voice of the Holy Spirit that raises Jesus out of Hades and through which moment, through which action, Jesus raises both Adam and Eve and the rest of the human race from this destiny of death. It's not in the Gospels, but I think that Mary was probably there before Mary Magdalene, before the Apostles because she knew, she knew her son would live. She knew and trusted that he came to give life. She understood his words and his mission. Let us pray to Mary, the mother of God, asking her to help us trust, to help us believe, to help us receive Christ, to be Christ in the Passion, to be Christ on the cross, to forgive, accept the gift of life, and to share. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. May the blessing of the Lord be with you in this holy week, that of the Father, and the Son, 
in the Holy Spirit. Amen.